gunman who killed 26-year-old beautician L. Edwards when he opened fire outside a pub in Liverpool on Christmas Eve last year has been jailed for a minimum of 48 years. After Connor Chapman was found guilty of L's murder yesterday, her father Tim said outside court, I hope he rots in hell. I'm joined now by former police officer Peter Kirkham and former Liverpool gang boss Sicarius McGrath who now works with charities across the UK to prevent gun violence. Thank you gentlemen both for joining me. Let's start with uh, Peter Kirkham. Peter, 48 years minimum sentence, that sounds about right for this awful, awful murder, doesn't it? I've certainly not got any complaints about it. No. It's uh, mean that he's going to be in his 70s before he's released. Uh, the whole of his, the main part of his life is going to be behind bars um, and looking at his previous criminal history uh, and then this, uh, that is exactly where he deserves to be. Tell me, tell me a little bit about what was really going on that night because it's been said now repeatedly that Elle was completely innocent, it was pure accident that she was anywhere near what was going on she wasn't known to anybody she was just having a drink like so many people in pubs all over the country this should never 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 have happened to her should it it, it certainly appears that way and um, from the information that's out in the public domain i don't uh, see anything that uh, means there's any link between her um, and the intended targets who happen to be standing next to her uh, if you're in a pub and especially if you're going to go out for a smoke or something you'll find yourself randomly speaking to other people that happen to have chosen that moment to go out for a smoke as well. And she just had the misfortune to be standing right next to uh, the two intended targets, both of whom were injured, um, when Chapman decided to carry out this entirely reckless attack. I mean, if you, if you look at the CCTV of it, he wasn't standing still at any point. There was no attempt to aim whatsoever. Not that you can aim much with a Scorpion submachine gun anyway. Um, it's designed to just throw out a wall of lead uh, in the direction where anybody that happens to be there is your enemy. Well, that's not the case if you do a shooting in a public place. And unfortunately, we see this time and time and time again um, that people carry out these reckless uh, attacks and entirely innocent passers-by and bystanders uh, end up dead or injured. And, um, I'm, and I'm assuming it's not because they don't know that this is going to happen. It's because they don't care that this is going to happen. They don't care at all. They don't care. Let me bring let me bring my next guest and let me bring Sakaris into this because obviously you're familiar with this environment you're familiar with what's going on and what we read in the papers is two gangs two different estates either side of the M53 are you familiar with that particular feud and what on earth it was based on or the origins of it Yeah I couldn't tell you and I wouldn't want to speculate but you know it's it's similar to what the gang disputes where two people have got a disagreement for whatever reason um, and, you know, as a consequence, stuff like this tends to happen, especially when there's firearms involved. Well, what, what was being said by, by Elle's father was that he's known about that feud all his life, so's everybody else. But for years and years, the, the bitter disputes between the warring gangs were sort of conducted via fisticuffs. So you didn't get killed if you weren't part of it. You didn't get accidentally end up in the crossfire because there was no crossfire. Now he says it's all about the shooting and that's Elle's father talking. Would you agree with him? Things have changed profoundly. Yes, definitely, but it, it changed earlier in Liverpool, where his widow was a bit late to catch him up, and, and yet he is exactly right in what he's saying. Uh, in those areas, they did used to settle stuff by fist fights. I'm not trying to justify that, but obviously things have moved on, times have moved on, mm. and the gangs have evolved uh, with, with, with the times. And, and explain the level of hatred or the level of venom or the level of, of, of revenge or whatever it is that means that this man set out to kill. He was doing it on purpose. That's why he went to the pub that night. He didn't care that there'd be other people involved. Didn't care less. So deep was his his anger or his resentment or his whatever it was. What is it? What, what is, what's the purpose of all of this stuff? I, I, I couldn't tell you personally how he felt as an individual, but it's more recklessness. And when you, when you're discharging a firearm, gang members are do tend to be reckless, and they've got no regard for whoever whoever else may be harmed in the process. And your career now is about trying to stop that, right? Well, yes, that's that's what I try to do. But 
I'm facing too many barriers, barriers with other professionals and other organisations not agreeing with my approach. What is your approach? It's more robust, it's more to the point. I speak the language that these young people speak because uh, Chapman, I'm assuming, was involved in crime before he got involved in firearms, whether it be petty crime, whatever that may be. And had he had the correct intervention at that point, then we may not be here now. We're, you know, Ellie Edwards may still be alive. And what is what is the correct intervention? What do you do? How does it work? Well, it needs to be a lot more robust. Um, in addition to stop and search and, and police disrupting these gangs, there needs to be early intervention to divert these young people away from gangs and away from violent crime and try and prevent them going down that road. And unfortunately, what we're seeing with youth workers and youth organisations, they're not competent and they're not having the right approach. Everything's like they, they, they try and pussyfoot around and they try and do everything in a snowflake manner. And if you if you were allowed to do and help to do what you want to do and do it the way you feel will work and does work, you've said twice a robust intervention, but I haven't made it at all clear what that means. So what do you mean? If you could do what you wanted to do and what you're convinced will work, what would it be? How, robo how robust would it be and in what way? Well, firstly, the people who are delivering any intervention need to be compatible with their audience. So these young kids... The people who are delivering interventions to them need to be compatible with them. They need to speak the same language. They, they, they can't be speak, speaking in some politically correct way. So the language these kids speak in the gangs, whoever's delivering the intervention or the programme needs to speak that same language. Mm -hmm. They need to talk like them. They need to behave like them. And also, the reality needs to get through. They need to be showing them the graves of gang members who've died. And there needs to be a reality of seeing how many, how, how many hours you're locked up in a, in a 12 by 8 cell and the repercussions of prison, the repercussions on your family. But when I say explain it, I don't mean explain it in a, in a mild manner. I mean explain in a way where, where it's going to more or less scare them straight. I know. I, I mean, on, on the other hand, I think Peter will, Peter Kirkham will confirm this. I mean, this kind of thing has been going on for years. I mean, taking young people to the morgue to show them the dead bodies, showing them photographs of people who've been shot to smithereens, showing them grieving yeah. mothers, sobbing, explaining how it isn't just one person one day. It's a whole family and a whole neighbourhood and a whole school and it goes on forever and you never, you ever, ever get over it. I mean, all the kind of techniques of shocking and showing and all of that kind of thing have been used for years already haven't they peter no, i disagree with you I dis I disagree. And, and let peter just let peter just respond and then we'll come straight back to you yes they have and they have had an effect uh, in a lot of cases it's quite hard to measure something you've stopped uh, but there are lots and lots of examples anecdotal examples and and uh, such like that that you can show that they've had an effect unfortunately they're not funded in a systematic and long-term way it's not done everywhere. There is no sort of central, well, this is what it's got to deliver, how you deliver it, matter for you, tell us what you're going to do, we'll just check out it's going to hit, hit the right aims and objectives. Um, so there's no systematic approach to it. Um, it is effective, and I absolutely agree that the people delivering it need to be credible. Uh, that applies when you're trying to do training for police officers. The people doing the training need to be credible there if you're going to make changes to police officers. Um, and, and so that principle is absolutely sound. But what we need is a systematic, long-term, properly funded approach, and we simply haven't got it. Uh, Chapman is an absolute classic example of someone who has got a criminal record starting in his early teens, steadily escalating to worse and worse offences, um, hardly any significant custodial sentences, repeated community sentences, community service orders, probation orders and such like, uh, constantly breaching them, uh, absolutely no regard for the law whatsoever. And the message that is given to someone in that position is, you can do what you like and the system's never going to catch up with you in any meaningful way. And the only way it stops, and it stops like it has stopped here, uh, with the death or serious injury of some innocent person uh, further along the line, is when they do something as daft as this and someone dies. Let's bring Sakaris back in. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I agree with, exactly, with everything Mr Kirkham says, but yeah. uh, I just catch up on what you said before. You're saying these, these tactics and these approaches are being used now. That's not, the, that's not the case. That's not correct. They may have been used historically in the past, but if we look at how, how things have evolved now, we didn't have the problem we have now back then. So these tactics are no longer being used. We're not taking children to the morgue because it's saying it traumatised them and so on, but that, uh, you know, these tactics are not being used 
as you think they are. That's not correct. Right. And so tell me about your the, the fact that you're trying to intervene in a robust way, as you say. And who is stopping you? Is it schools? Is it social workers? Is it the government? Why, why aren't you allowed to do what you think works and you know works and you know because you've been there yourself? Because the people who are stopping me are the teachers, the schools, the social workers, the youth workers and these organisations and charities. It's not governments, it's these professionals on the ground who, who, who have lived in a different bubble, who have never lived that lifestyle and, and, and are too bothered about equality and, and offending people. Now, we can't be like that. These aren't, these aren't kids from university. These are kids who are stone-cold killers and are going to go on to kill people. Tell me, tell me, Sicarius, what happened to you? What was the intervention that changed you from the lifestyle that you were living to what you're trying to do now, which is help people not do what you did? It wasn't an intervention. I took something until my mid-30s to change, and it was when I seen the impact on, on a child's parents, the impact that had on them, that, that hit me and hit home, and I decided, no, this isn't for me. I was an evil trade, I was in an evil world, uh, and, and I was an evil man. And that's why I decided from that point on, I want to change and help others. Mm. And, but, and, what, and, but now you feel but, now you feel frustrated because what you think and what you know works is not being allowed to be implemented, is that right? Exactly that. And as a result, more people are dying on the streets because of these uh, snowflake professionals and these snowflake youth workers who are incompetent and won't deliver the correct programmes. And Peter Kirkham, do you think the police is implicated in that, this kind of snowflake attitude? To be honest, most of this is, is outside the police's sphere of uh, effective influence. It's no use putting police officers in front of uh, young terrorways that are descending the... Uh, the escalator of crime to serious crime, uh, telling them uh, drugs are bad and don't go near guns and firearms and mm. knives and whatever. Um, they just don't have the credibility that hits home with those that need to hear it. Um, it the whole thing with the professionals is, as Sicaria says, they've not lived this life. They don't understand this life. Police officers tend to understand it, certainly frontline police officers. Uh, tend to understand it a bit better because they're there amongst it all the time. Um, but but the professionals do tend to err on the side of um, being politically correct, being careful, taking a sort of less impactive uh, approach. Uh, but the main thing is that they're not, it's not delivered in any consistent way. There is no model of aims and objectives for these programmes that is applied across the country. There is no systematic approach to telling all kids and you need to keep doing it because year seven this year is year eight next year and there's another year seven or whatever it might be mm. and so constantly needing to do this it's not something you can deliver and it's done you deliver it and you then keep delivering it you have to keep delivering it i'm gonna and, i'm and gonna let i'm gonna let sicarius give the final the final word on this um what would your message be to the authorities, whether it's head teachers, teachers, whether it's social workers, even parents. Sigaris, what would you say is the, is the crucial thing? Because obviously the story of Elle is absolutely heartbreaking. It's appalling. It's unnecessary. It's just so, such a terrible, tragic shame that this could have happened to such a lovely girl. What, what would you say? Final Hello. word. Yeah, uh, obviously the police are not a barrier. I got quite a lot of support from the police, but the barrier to me is the professionals, the youth workers, and the social workers and they need to understand do they really want blood on their hands by trying to stop a, a more effective intervention a more effective program we need to change the approach and we need to do it now